I mean, that's the, yeah, recording's on. So. Okay, why don't we pray and get started? Okay. Um, let's pray that, um, you know, I just, I just wanted to pray uh, for those of us who might be in, you know, financial needs, right? Like, let's say you're saying, okay, I have a financial need, I have a need for money, or my family needs money, right? Uh, we very badly need a breakthrough in finances, right? So we've been learning about what God's heart is towards money, right? We see that he's, he's not the one to withhold. So, so with faith, let's pray. Let's agree and pray, right? Let's pray for breakthrough. Let's pray for maybe somebody is in debt. Let's pray that uh, there'll be a cancellation of debt, right? Uh, but more importantly, that there'll be... Uh, you know, a path of re recovery, a path of restoration, right? Um, so let's let's pray. Okay, let's extend our faith. Let's pray. Let's uh, just pray in the spirit for some time. Pray in tongues, like softly, just between you and God. <laughs> Just prepare your heart. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Father God, we, we thank you this morning that, uh, Lord, even as we look into your word, we get a clear picture of who you are, Lord. And the more we meditate on your word, Father God, we get a better understanding of who you are, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that all the wrong thoughts, wrong ideas, wrong pictures that we have, Lord, about you, about ourselves, Lord, and especially about um, this whole subject of money, financial matters, Lord, we thank you that we get a clearer pers perspective and we look into your word, meditate on your word, Father God. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, right now, we pray for those who are in financial lack or financial need, Lord, those who need money desperately, God. And Lord, we, we just pray right now for a breakthrough of finances, Lord. Yes, Lord, your word says that, uh, Lord, that you are the one who gives us, gives to all richly, to enjoy, Father God, that but we should not put our trust in the uncertain riches. And Lord, we thank you that you, Lord, introduce yourself, Lord, to Abraham as Jehovah, Jairah, the one who provides. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for who you are, Master. And Lord, even right now, we pray for a breakthrough for those who, who need a breakthrough in finances. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we, we pray for the impossible to happen in their lives. We pray for every barrier to be broken. Lord, every chain to be broken, every barrier to be, be uh, broken and loved, I pray for a release of finances in their lives, Master. And even right now, Lord, we pray, God, if, uh, Lord, whatever is holding it back, Lord, uh, we pray that it will be just neutralized, cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, if it's a wrong practice, we pray for wisdom. Lord, if, it, if it's a mind, wrong mindset, Lord, we pray that the light of your truth will penetrate the darkness. And Lord, I pray that there will be change. And Lord, we pray for those who are in debt as well. Lord, who have borrowed and unable to pay back. Lord, we pray for a cancellation of that debt. And Lord, we pray that you will place them in a place on a path of restoration and recovery, Father God. Lord, that they will uh, be brought to a place of good financial health, God. And Lord, we pray above all for wisdom, good practices, Lord. Uh, Lord, that will be practical things, Father God, that will be established in their lives so that they do not get into debt again, Lord. Yes, Master, we thank you. Enable us to live contently. Lord, with what we have, Father God, and also, God, knowing fully well that you're the one who takes pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. We thank you, Master. We come at this time, Lord, we believe it is done according to the finished work of the cross. Believe it is done. Pray for a release of that. Let your kingdom come, that you will be done in each one of our lives. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so say an amen to that and uh, just pray in agreement, just pray believing and continue to believe that there will be a, you know, a, a, a breaking of that bondage of debt, right? Um, okay, I just want to share the notes here.
Okay. So we've been looking at, um, you know, last class we ended by looking at um, uh, the covenant of blessings and uh, so on, you know, the blessings of Abraham, how it is God's intention to prosper. Um, so the general promises of God, the blessings of Abraham, the covenant, and so on. We also looked uh, very briefly, we looked at some of the hindrances. Okay, we saw that, yes, you know, there, there are hindrances um, because of which we are not really enjoying what we should be enjoying. Okay, so which means what are hindrances, something that blocks, something that stops, something that withholds. Okay, so from God's side, there is nothing that's withholding. Okay, we see God's nature, His heart for His people, right through the Old Testament and in the New Testament. We see that consistently in Scripture, right? That it is God's heart to bless, that it is God's will to prosper. And people have prayed, right? In in the New Testament, we see three John and verse two. Um, there's a prayer, right? We're praying in line with the will of God. Right? So why should we pray if it is not the will of God? So uh, 3 John 2, we see that, Beloved, I pray that you would, you would be in health and prosper just as your soul prosper. Prosper in all things just as your soul prosper. So, so we see that God is not against it. So, which means there could be other hindrances. Right? There could be other things that someone is not doing right. right? Because of which there is a blockage, there is a barrier to what we need to actually rightfully receive from God. Okay, so one such thing is wrong motivation, wrong intention. Okay, so James puts it very clearly, James chapter 4, uh, verses 2 and 3, it says, you lust and you not have. So it talks about a lot of things, wrongful ways in which we can actually uh, take, uh, receive, right? Or we can take something. Um, so it talks about lusting, murdering, coveting, and it says you cannot have, you cannot obtain, right? You fight and you war and you do not have because you do not ask. So what does that mean? What does it show us again? That God really requires us to trust in Him, right? To receive from Him. You do not have because you do not ask. Which means that if you put, turn it around, you will have when you ask. Isn't that so? Right? That's how it is, right? He's saying you do not have because you do not ask. Which means that if I ask, I would have. But he also goes on to say in verse 3, you ask and then you do not receive. You're still asking, but you're not receiving. Why? What is the reason? Look into your Bible. James chapter 2 and verse 3. What is the reason? Somebody's asking and not risking and uh, not receiving. Sorry. No? Because you ask with wrong motivation. Wrong, okay. R asking with wrong intention, wrong motivation. And the, the old language, old English is you ask amiss. Right? And uh, because you ask amiss, and it goes on to explain that you may spend it on your pleasures, that you may spend it on your pleasures. And he has some strong words, right? Uh, in verse 4, he's saying, you know, adulterers and adulteresses. And so these are people, he's talking, going on to explain, you're spending, I mean, you, you ask and you do not receive because you want to spend it on your own pleasures. And then he's saying that, you know, uh, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Okay, so, so that's the, he's describing the kind of people who are lusting, murdering, coveting, asking, and not receiving. Right? Why? Because they want they are asking amiss. They are self-centered. They want to put, you know, spend it all on their own pleasures. Or and then they also say that he also goes on to say that you know you are actually friends with the world. What does that mean? Friends with the world. Don't you know? Uh, sorry. You can use the mic, yeah. Last of these worlds. No, what does it mean to be your friends with the world? So what does it mean? You're desiring to have what? Sorry? I, I didn't hear. I didn't hear that. 
all things that are in the world yeah but um, see john 316 god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son right so why can't i be friend why can't i be friends with the world pastor friend with the world is enmity with god yeah that's verse Because, 3 uh, okay, your verse mind is worldly you are all the time thinking of the world thing pleasures and not about god hmm all the time thinking about the world so when we look at the world when you you know you, you know see the world uh, the, uh, I and mean, the term world it could mean the physical world the cosmos i'm not sure what greek word is used there it could mean cosmos right the created world the universe and so on but it also talks about the world system the world's values the world's culture right so which is what james is referring to he's saying your friends with the world which means the world's system of doing things the world's pattern of doing things what the world esteems highly world's culture values etc so he's, so that is what he's saying you know uh, that don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with god you want to say something moses yeah. the scripture also goes on to say that you know we are in this world but not of this world exactly so it's like being more uh, in other ways being obedient to the prince of the world that uh, where we are actually heading away from god mm -hmm. yeah so so we are in this world system but we are not of the world and the world's you know a way of doing things right so we are separated consecrated ones okay i see some um, comments here friends with worldliness in sort of godliness uh, very nicely put going along living in agreeing with and loving the lusts of the flesh yes um carnality instead of righteousness friends or um, you know associated with carnality yeah uh, very true so that that actually brings out um you know what world actually is referring to so so that, so such a kind of mindset and so james is saying hey you are asking and yet you are not receiving okay so so what is the so the, so we see that that can be a major hindrance a major block okay so which means when i ask i ask in faith when i ask i ask for my needs because the lord says in in matthew chapter 5 we see right we see that matthew 5 6 7 and then i think it's it's in uh, matthew 6 i think where where he says uh, it talks about legitimate things when he's talking about worry uh, when he's talking about um, you know uh, don't worry about what you will eat what you will uh, drink uh, yeah that's matthew 6 right matthew 6 and uh, verse 25 onwards so so these are legitimate things food clothing shelter yeah Leg legitimate means these are some things that are required necessary right food clothing shelter necessity right so is it okay for me to pray about that yes food clothing shelter you're going to put it you know you're going to use it you're going to use it for yourself it's okay but when james says you're asking a miss doesn't mean that you cannot ask for yourself for your needs right the lord jesus says you know ask and you will receive seek and you will find knock and it will be open to you right matthew 7 7 so ask seek not so here when we see that okay i'm asking a miss so i'm actually friends with the world my thoughts are on the world i want to spend it on my pleasures and to the exclusion of everything else i'm not thinking about god i'm not thinking about righteousness i'm not thinking about pleasing god at all in my asking in my what i'm going to do with what i receive from him right so that is what james is talking about look at another scripture luke chapter 16 okay the parable that the lord jesus taught okay let's read through 16 to 21 he spoke a parable to them saying the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully so obviously he's a farmer he's an agriculturist a lot of things have been uh, you know he's planting and there's a lot of uh, harvest and he thought within himself saying what shall i do since i have no room to store my crops is is in a good place or not very good for a businessman for a you know agriculture is good got so much returns he's saying i'm not able to store okay then 
So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns, okay, pull down these places of storage where I'm storing my crops and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up. So he's telling himself, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? Verse 21, so is he who lays up treasures for himself and not and is not rich towards God. Okay, So when we read this, we, are, we need to understand in context, okay, is it wrong for someone to build bigger barns, bigger storage, because they're getting increase? First question, what do you think? Hmm? So you're getting a lot. So let's say 200 students, we can't obviously have class here. We have to move to some other place, or we have to have those single chairs, maybe, right? 500 students, we have to have a... So is it wrong to move to a bigger place, bigger space? So in a, in, in a, in a, in a, you know, this businessman or this farmer, he's facing a similar situation. He's being blessed. He's working hard, probably. He's yielding a lot. There's not enough room. So he's saying, oh, I need to, you know, I need to pull these, I need to build bigger ones. Is there anything wrong in it? No. So that's what he's saying. And he's telling himself, you know, maybe let's say his name is, what name shall we give him? You know, uh, whatever, Mark, Farmer Mark. Mark is saying, Mark, you relax. You know, you worked hard. You've done well. Relax. Eat. Merry, be merry, eat, drink, be merry. And obviously, he's drinking non alcoholic drinks, fruit juice. <laughs> right? He's saying, eat, drink, just relax. Is that wrong? You're, you're doubtful now. Come on. <laughs> Is that wrong? Is it no, wrong? Pastor. No, it's not wrong. Okay. Okay, Lucy is saying, good to store things, but his heart is not glorifying God. Yeah. So, so that is also not wrong to say, hey, I, I need to rest and relax. And I know I worked hard. It's fine. So look at this. Um, so the, because we look at verse 20 and we think, oh, maybe it's, it's not good to have increase. Like, what is verse 20? The Lord is asking that question. Hard words. He's saying, you fool. This night, your soul will be required of you. You know, you will... You will cease to live. And then what will you do with these things? You can't obviously take it with you. So what will you do with these things? So we look at verse 20 and that question which God asks uh, in that parable. And then we think, okay, maybe it's not good to earn much. It's not good to store it. It's not good to just relax after all that hard work. We think like that, right? But look at verse 21. Okay, verse 21 is the key. Verse 21, he says, So is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. So which means that God is nowhere in his picture. Right? The, the, the same God who sends sun and rain on the, on the righteous and the unrighteous, the one who blesses, the one who causes increase to come into one's life, is nowhere in, in his plan of things. So that is what he's addressing. He's saying, so is one who lays up treasures for himself, but is not rich towards God. Okay. So it reflects the same thing. 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 6 and verse 17. Same thing. It's, it's God who gives us all things to enjoy, richly gives us all things to enjoy. But do not put your trust in uncertain riches. Right? In fact, it's a warning to the rich and he say you know command those who are rich not to be arrogant or be boastful not to be full of pride okay, okay so wrong motivation we understand that the second one we see is wrong methods okay methods of doing things wrong methods which means that you know our god 
what is he he is a holy god the holy you know the spirit of god holy spirit he's a righteous god okay um, psalm chapter 5 and verse 4 for you are not a god who takes pleasure in wickedness right the psalm is saying you're not a god who takes pleasure in wickedness nor shall evil dwell with you verse 12 for you o lord will bless the righteous with favor you will surround him with a shield okay so he's saying you will bless the righteous one who has a right standing with god one who has one who does the right things you will bless the righteous right and also psalm 23 we know that he leads us in paths of righteousness okay so righteousness is the right things right righteousness is, is the very nature of god himself right so he leads us in paths of righteousness so the methods that we use to get riches okay the method that we use either it could be you know in whatever area you know we're not, we're not talking about just finances alone maybe we want some kind of success we want to increase right we want to be successful what methods are we using right sometimes you know we 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 we, we need to set we, we think we need to separate it right in church i'll be like this but at work i'll be like i'll be like totally different i'll be you know, the other way right so that's not true because if it's god who gives us increase and he's the one who exalts exaltation comes from him promotion comes from him so the the instruction here is that okay are we doing the right thing am i employing the right method okay so uh, you know certain certain things we might we might think okay i'm i'm doing this but i look around others are doing some quick things others are doing cutting corners they're taking some shortcuts right they are you know em using other corrupt methods of bribing and doing other things to get what they want you know should not i also do it how long can i wait how long should i wait others are going ahead and this is a corrupt system how long should i you know the thought crosses our minds right but if we want to enjoy success god's way god given prosperity we looked at you know what is prosperity we like it's 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 god given and it's god given methods right so we know that okay to receive those kind of blessings from god then our methods also have to be righteous right that's the second thing okay so if i'm employing wrong methods that becomes a hindrance for god given prosperity and increase third thing that we see is disobedience in finances okay um luke 16 and verse 10 you know disobedience could mean okay maybe god gives an instruction you do it right? this is what i want you to do with these finances okay um it could be in terms of giving it could be in terms of anything you know maybe investing maybe saving maybe you know maybe being um uh, uh, wise in it right being a good steward so when we disobey the instructions of god when we disobey the principles the values then we are being disobedient in finances okay so this luke 16 and verse 10 he who is faithful this is actually after the parable the lord jesus is uh, you know summing it up and he's saying that he who is faithful and what is least is faithful uh, sorry he who is faithful in least is also faithful in much but he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much so the requirement for faithfulness the requirement for being obedient uh, and yielded to god when it comes to finances okay so uh, malachi 3 verses 9 to 11 okay again some very harsh words right okay um right so it says, um, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. Okay. 
and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Okay. So what is the problem here? The Lord has got a complaint. He's saying, hey, you are not receiving blessing, but you are actually, you know, you are cursed with a curse. Why? Because he says, you need to bring all the tithes. You're not actually offering what needed to be offered to God. Okay, tithes is one tenth. So saying tenth and um, I think somebody's uh, okay. Um, it's muted. Okay, right. So so this is what we see here. You know, you're not bringing all the tithes into the storehouse. Okay. So we're going to learn about tithes, about giving, uh, about you know giving to the poor, about you know we, we're going to learn that a little further. So. You might have questions, you know, where should I tithe? Is tithe an Old Testament principle? Uh, are we not in the new dispensation, etc.? So you might have some questions. So hold on to those questions. We will answer them, you know, a little later when we look at those things. Okay. But what, what we see here is God has laid down a principle. Man is disobedient, is not following that principle, and therefore that becomes a hindrance. Okay. So this is when we are disobedient in our finances. In, in what God wants us to do with our finances, not just tithes. You know. Maybe God puts it in our heart, God instructs us, God uh, leads us to do something with the money. Okay, And we're not doing it, then we are being actually disobedient in our finances. right? Okay, Then in the same chapter that we saw, same scripture, verse 11, what does it say? The Lord is saying, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy, nor shall the wine fa uh, fail to bear fruit. Okay, so he's talking about the. He's talking about Satan. He's talking about powers of darkness, and he's saying, you know, I will rebuke the devourer. Okay, so what is the devourer doing? Devourer is coming against the prosperity of his people, right? So there is a very real enemy who is coming against. Our prosperity, our success, our increase, and that is what we see here. So, saying he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, okay, meaning your yield, whatever effort you put in, right, so that the land will yield. You've worked hard. The devourer, the possibility here, you know, the Lord is saying, you know, the devourer, he does that, destroy the fruit of your ground. Whatever effort you put in, wants to sort short circuit that. Okay, he will. What what does he say? Nor shall the vine, oh, sorry, vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. So, so the Lord is saying, okay, I will, I will be that shield. I will be that protection. But the other thing that we see here is that there is a real enemy. Uh, John chapter ten and verse ten. The Lord Jesus spoke about the enemy. He said, you know, the enemy, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Okay, To steal, kill, and to destroy. So all areas of our life, all aspects of our life, maybe relationships, um, you know, we know that whatever God has built in our lives, or we are, you know, do, we are trying to do something, start something, the enemy is very real. Enemy is defeated, but the enemy is very real. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? Okay, so the opposition of the enemy, the hindrance for God-given prosperity is also because of the opposition of the enemy. Okay, right. But the good news is this. The Lord says, I will rebuke the devourer. And then we see that the enemy has been, the power of the enemy has been broken. Um, and we have been given the authority to, um, to uh, against all the powers of the enemy. Okay, then the fifth thing that we see is, Lack of wisdom. Okay, so we need to be wise. Uh, we need to have the wisdom to use the knowledge that we have. Right? Proverbs twenty-four puts it very beautifully. Proverbs twenty-four verse three: Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. He is a man of knowledge, increases strength. For by wise counsel you will wage your own war, 
and in a multitude of counselors there is safety right so when you look at verse 3 it says through wisdom houses built okay you can look at it figuratively and say okay whatever you know that the lord wants built in our lives we can you know we can say okay figuratively through wisdom it is built but also literally right wisdom is required what is wisdom pastor wisdom is insight and foresight insight and foresight foresight okay to think ahead to plan ahead okay Okay, right use of knowledge. Okay, we have information, processed information is knowledge. The right use of knowledge okay, is, is wisdom, right, in a simple way. So, foresight and insight and understanding. So, we need that. Okay, it's very easy to give somebody, let's, let's say you want to give um, maybe some a few lakhs, maybe like 10 lakhs to someone, okay? And if that person does not have the wisdom to rightfully use it, okay? It can be anyone. If that person does not have the wisdom, they will spend it, right, um, on this, that, and the other, or maybe even invest it in wrong things, and it'll be just, it'll be gone. It might take some time to use 10 lakhs, use up 10 lakhs, but it will be gone. So without wisdom inbuilt in their lives, right? A person cannot, you can, you can give whatever you want, you can do you know, exorbitant amounts of money, it will be gone. They can spend it, right? So wisdom is a hindrance to even receive. Forget spending, hindrance is a, I mean, sorry, wisdom is a hindrance to receive it, right? So it says, through wisdom, one has access to wealth and riches. But when we don't have wisdom, it is even a hindrance to receive. Okay, the last one is insufficient effort, okay, which means that, um, you know, we're going to look at the principles also, but we, we see that the Lord wants us to put in effort, okay, put in work. And, uh, you know, one of the principles for God-given prosperity is work. Okay. So he, he has instituted work, he has instituted effort, human effort, uh, for us to, to receive. Okay. So if, if there is no effort or insufficient effort, not adequate effort, inadequate effort, then that, re that results as that becomes a hindrance to receive okay so god wants to give but maybe god you know he wants to give it into our lives bring it into our lives through work through employment you know we sometimes think okay um we we we, we say okay god will provide and we have a, our own idea how god will provide i pray for money how will god provide somebody will come and give it and say dear brother you know that's fine. God does it, right? God absolutely does it, and He delights in doing that, right? It's, and it's exciting, you know. How did you know that I needed? I don't, I don't know. I just, I just felt God told me I had to do it, so I'm giving it, right? And sometimes it's just what we need for that particular, you know, to take care of that need, just the right amount. Okay, so that's fine. But God also brings things into our lives through our employment, through our, you know, whatever means by which, you know, he has instituted for us, through work, right? So to be gainfully employed is a way in which God provides for our needs, okay? Look at this, Proverbs 10 and verse 4, He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. What does diligence mean? Sorry? Hard work, focused work, intentional, sincere, right? All that comes under diligence, right? So 
so it says here that uh, the hand of the diligence diligent makes rich so which means one when puts in diligent effort that's a way so if there is you know not diligent effort that becomes a hindrance okay uh, ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10 whatever your hand finds to do do it with your might but there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going so whatever your fi hand finds to do it do it but do it wholeheartedly do it with your might because there is return so so these are some hindrances okay we looked at six things so um so when when you look at these hindrances these are okay so these are things that we can avoid we need to avoid we need to be careful of okay so in my own life you know is there is there anything like this that becomes a hindrance well there is nothing on god's side god really we know god's heart god wants to give god delights in giving but on my part is there anything you know so we look at ourselves and say okay let me just clear up my life if there is anything that you know anything like this you know, lack of wisdom maybe you know lack of effort lack of work then let me change right and it's good to change now you know we we think okay first let the money come and then we'll see right right now i'm dealing with you know hundreds and maybe thousands and let the money come let the big money come and then i will put or put the, all this in practice it won't happen right unless we we put it we built we build these things intentionally in our lives right now okay and then even when when the when the you know when the what the bible talks about the big things you know faithful in small things and we will be faithful in the bigger things right we need to build that right now okay okay so uh, the, the next one is about principles next chapter is about principles for um principles for divine prosperity so we're going to look at uh, look at those what has what principles what are principles principles are you know some truths some propositions or you know some some things that god has put in place and that works for you know uh, that is already put in place so that and it is the truth and god wants us or he has put in place and he wants these to work in our lives okay if we would take these principles and if we would use it okay what are some pr principles that you see in scripture some principles anything that you see a uh, tithing pastor okay tithing when it yeah, with with the finances we see okay god has put this in place right okay thank you anything else like we see scriptures like okay you know do good to others you know the lord put some very radical principles bless those who curse you right but it's a principle the lord is saying okay this is what you need to do right pray for those who spitefully use you and all bless and do not curse so this whole thing of releasing a blessing even to our enemies is something is a biblical scriptural principle right so um and do good to others as you would want to want that good to be done to you as well right so that's another principle that we see so we're going to look at some of these principles which actually help in divine prosperity which we see in scripture okay so we looked at hindrances next we look at um principles okay so we'll stop here um yeah ask and you shall receive yeah sanjay okay so we'll stop here and next class we we're going to look at the um principles for divine prosperity okay thank you